time for another Pangea Soft video. This one's about robots. Yeah, you know what time it is. Automatic time, baby. Released on December 4th, 2001, Automatic is another 3D adventure game, similar to Bugdom 1 and 2. You're comparing yourself to me? Ha! Huh. You're not I'll even make you eat those words. In fact, this game feels very similar to Bugdom. I wouldn't even be surprised if they use the same game engine. That would explain the references, I suppose. And nothing of value was lost. So, I never played this game at all growing up. In fact, the only reason I know it exists is because of its references in Bugdom 2 and its page it has on Apple's App Store. However, just because it went by my peripheral vision as a kid, that doesn't mean it wasn't a big hit. Automatic was still one of their biggest successes over the years. And Brian Greenstone, creator of Pangea Software, has gone on record saying this is their favorite game they've ever made. Automatic was also one of the five Pangea Soft games Apple bundled in with their computers over the years. Meaning this guy here is on par with legends like Nanosaur and Rolly. Take that, Skip, you absolute sociopath. But you guys know the rules. You see a pack in title, you mind your damn business. They top charts like it's no one's business, and they have no problems putting you on one. Automatic didn't just live life on home computers, though. Like Bugdom 2, this game was ported to iOS back in the day as well. But... I'm skeptical, since the thought of using a touchscreen for a 3D platformer... Yikes. But other than that, Automatic suffered the same fate as many other Mac games. Doomed to obsolescence and incompatibility. But once again, this crazy little dinosaur here went back in time, choked Automatic by his non-existent throat, and dragged him kicking and screaming into the future for us to enjoy once more. Modernized just like the other games. Side note. We really have to thank people like Elias Horio and other game preservationists. Without people like them, a lot of games would be truly lost to time. But with that out of the way, let's jump jet into Automatic. That's a that, that's a reference to the game. You you wouldn't get it yet. We we haven't played it yet. Don't worry. You'll you'll get you'll get it in a second. That's a pretty cute title screen. I wonder who else is- OH MY FUCK! WHAT IS THAT THING?! Listen guys, I'm warning you now. As long as this guy remains face up, we can't activate any trap cards. So I looked at all these guys, and literally all of these motherfuckers are horrifying except for Otto himself here. Between this and Bugdom 2's character design, it's like Brian Greenstone was like, LET THE CHILDREN KNOW FEAR! Come to think of it, Nanosaur was also terrifying. Maybe Bugdom 1 and Cro-Mag Rally were the exception, and wow. these guys just love making cursed ominous constructs. Oh, I uh, guess I don't need my ship then. Oh, that, that's, uh, that's unfortunate for you, ma'am. Wait, rescue humans by touching them? Shit, I was supposed to be helping! Oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez. These humans are your main way of getting points for this game. You touch them, and they count towards your score at the end of the level. But if you're too slow, the UFO will abduct them, and you lose out on those points. Imagine bugged them, but if you didn't make it to the ladybugs in time, they'd execute them. That's a hell of a plot right there. Another collectible here is Atoms. Red heals you. Green fills your jump jet's fuel, which lets you rocket forward to break through obstacles, clear gaps, or generally speed up. Gotta beat those UFOs somehow. And finally, there's Blue Atoms. These fill up your ship's fuel and are needed to beat the level. Wait, Mr. Tomatoes? First Jinzo and now this? Send them all to the graveyard, Otto! Would a robot from 2001 be considered an ancient gear by today? Hey! Uh, okay. What's this game you wanna show me? Yeah, dude, this is automatic! I thought you'd love this game, but it's about a few little robot here. 
me that controller! I'm gonna throw hands with that onion! Whether or not you collect humans at all, the level is beaten once you reach your ship. Granted, you have enough blue energy. I always have enough blue energy! Wow! Otto sure is good at rescuing the same person over and over again. Well, it's a small town, there's probably not much genetic diversity. So essentially, that's the main premise here. You explore each level, collecting enough blue atoms to power your ship, getting as many humans as you can along the way. Weapons are luckily littered throughout each level to help, like guns, grenades, or this electric AOE attack you get from finding batteries. Fun fact, Pangeasoft calls this one the supernova, that's fucking badass. There are some level gimmicks here and there as well, like sledding or water skiing, but they're not anything too intrusive. Fuck the water skiing! But there are two I wanted to bring direct attention to. The first of which is level 9, a UFO flight level where you get to turn the tables on Jinzos by abducting the humans right out of their brainy little mitts. And with their own UFO to boot. Not only is the poetic justice just mwah, but it's a fun little challenge as well. You have no way of healing yourself, but you also don't have to save every human, so it's a risk versus reward kind of gamble for a higher score. But then on the other end, there's the bumper cars. My god, are those evil clowns? Yeah, don't worry, they kind of suck at attacking you though. Anyway, this whole thing sucks. Your objective is to crash into these towers, first to break off the bumper protecting them, and then to shut them all off. Otherwise, stepping out onto the track itself is an instant kill. The problems begin with these fucks, however. Their only goal in life is to smack you around with their bumper car, and by god, they're gonna make sure they do it. Their AI only tells them to chase after you though, so once they get you into a corner, it makes it super hard to build up any speed. Couple that with the absolutely awful controls of the bumper car, and it feels like you're subjected to the melting pot level of monkey ball. Well, guess there's nothing I can do about that lady. Sorry friend, I've got my own shit I'm trying to survive through right now. So like, why are we even saving these people in the first place? Oh, I could die and show you. That's why they're abducting humans? This is literally the most inefficient reproductive system I've ever seen. In all realness though, according to the page on Pangeasoft's website, you're automatic. A line of robots who defend the galaxy from evil. Yeah, that's cool, but are any of them the 99th Space Hunter? Didn't think so. Also, real quality planning your defense squad has here. They literally come down to the planet they protect with nothing to defend themselves with. Anyway, you specifically are an automatic sent to Earth in the year 1957, WHERE THE EVIL BRAIN ALIENS HAVE BEGUN THEIR INVASION! Which leads this poor schmuck on a goose chase across the galaxy. Automatic makes the guy from Taken look like a bitch. Without spoiling too much of the game, there's a couple boss fights as well. And like, I guess this guy could be considered a boss with the attacks they have, but they don't really do much to stop me from blasting them the giblets. But on second thought, I guess the fact a plant can defend itself in the first place is already pretty impressive. Eventually, after saving all the humans once again, Otto faces off against the leader of the brain aliens, the giant brain. He looks more like a bulb orb than a brain if you ask me. Anyway, we defeat Giant Brian, which somehow was easier than the plant boss, and we return all the humans back home. I think Automatic is a pretty entertaining time. It takes almost everything Bugdom has to offer and builds upon it. The main thing I like is how intertwined everything feels. For instance, these darts are a weapon in level 5. They hone in on enemies, but if you throw them at a balloon instead, they can pop a few which grants you a few extra power-ups. 
Or for the more morally gray of you, there's a size potion that you need to break through giant barricades in one level, but if you're fast enough to trample some buildings after, you can get some extra power-ups that way as well, you sick monster! You guys can have fun with Skip and Sam in prison for your war crimes. My favorite gimmick, however, is the Freeze Ray. You can use it to shatter these annoying slime enemies, and each shattered blob will give you power for each according color. You can also use it on Jinzo here for the same effect. It is a bit harder than other Pangea Soft games, though. For one, all water is instant death in this game. Couple that with your timer on getting the humans before their abduction, it leaves you frantically darting around on a blind run. There are some points where the UFO can be outright unfair. For one, in level 4, there's a door you need to open using your supernova. You see one over at the end of a hallway, with an item box next to it. You walk the whole ass way down, only to see it has to be opened from the other side. But, since you're already near the human behind it, the game spawns in a UFO, and there's no way you can save him in time. Kind of a dick move if you ask me. All in all though, Automatic would best be described as a sort of bugdom hard mode. The exploration feels the same, but the difficulty almost feels like it picked up right where bugdom left off. I'm pretty impressed with Automatic. It feels like the natural progression of what made bugdom fun, just with a bunch more cursed shit this time. Well, that's pretty much everything we wanted to talk about with this game. Except that he's very cute. Yes, he's very cute indeed. But either way, thanks for watching, guy. Thanks for watching the video! Sorry this one took so long to come out, I really need to work on my upload schedule. But I really wanted to thank Elias Horio not just for their work with preserving the Pangea Soft games, but they also made a model viewer inside of Bugdom that you can access by pressing F1 in space on the Pangea Soft menu screen, and it's only because of that that we were able to get the footage we needed for the automatic video here. So they really came in as a hero and just came in clutch for this, so they are my hero on all levels they are just absolute badasses and this goes out to them so have a good one guys <laughs>